What's going on everyone? Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to another question dealing with polynomial inequality. So we have to write the equation for a cubic inequality in factored form where the solution to it is going to be this over here where x is greater than or equal to negative two, less than or equal to positive one, and then greater than or equal to three. So first thing I wanna mention is that these over here, another way this could be written is x being greater than or equal to negative two, less than or equal to positive one. Over here, another way to write this, from three to infinity, x is greater than or equal to three. And because these are square brackets, that's why we have the greater than or equal to, less than or equal to signs, right? If they were circle brackets here, it would just be greater than, less than, greater than. Okay, but they're square brackets, so they're including those endpoints. Now, just in general, with polynomial inequalities, notice that usually we're given the inequality and we have to solve for these values. And how do we do that? We usually take everything, bring it to one side, and we'd end up getting some kind of polynomial, let's call it f of x, either being greater than or equal to something or less than or equal to something. And then we have to factor that polynomial and then do a sign chart or graph to get these intervals over here. Now usually what happens when we've solved these kinds of questions, notice that these points here, this negative two, this one, this three, those end up being the x-intercepts of these polynomials right? Because when this is going to be greater than or equal to zero, it's when it's going to be above or equal to that x-axis, or when it's less than or equal to zero, it's going to be below or equal to that x-axis. And so the points on the x-axis, those reference points, are usually going to be the intercepts. And so what we can do here is we can take these points, negative two, one, and three, and use them as the intercepts of this cubic function we're gonna be working with. So let's say negative two is like over here, one is over here, and then we have three over here. And so a cubic function with these intercepts, what are the factors gonna be? Well, it's going to be x plus two, x minus one, x minus three like that. And there could be some kind of a value here. It could be a positive a value, could be a negative a value. Now, if it's going to be a positive a value, then the cubic function is going to look something like that, right? It's going to have n behaviors from that third quadrant to the first quadrant. And so what we can do here is notice that these intervals, if we look at this diagram here, these intervals are the values of x where the y values are greater than or equal to zero, meaning that they are above the x-axis or equal to the x-axis. And so what we can do is we can take, we can say that this is the graph of this, and then to get these solutions, we can say, oh, well, we're finding when is it going to be greater than or equal to zero, like that. And then that ends up being the answer. So if you forgot all of this, if you took just this polynomial inequality and solved it, used a sign chart or graphed it like this, you'd end up getting the answers negative between negative two, positive one. That's when it's going to be greater than or equal to zero or when it's greater than or equal to three over here, right? It's kind of hard to explain. There's no like real algebraic way to do it or steps to do it like there is going the other way, right? It's kind of like a puzzle to solve. Now, you don't necessarily have to make it greater than or equal to zero. You could also make it less than or equal to zero, but then you'd have to flip this graph. So then what would happen? We're still gonna use those same intercepts. We're gonna have negative two, one, three, but then it would have to look something like this, 
right? So it would be this area and this area. And so if we made it less than or equal to zero, what we would have to make sure is that this cubic function has a negative leading coefficient because for a cubic function to have these n behaviors from two, from quadrant two to quadrant four, the leading coefficient has to be negative. And so we could just put a negative, any negative value in front of all of this. So let's say something like, I don't know, negative three, for example. Okay, this polynomial inequality would also give these solutions, right? You could take any of these here, you could throw them in a calculator, and you're gonna get those solutions right there into a graphing calculator. So we can generalize this. We can have an any a value here, as long as a is positive. And then over here, we can have any a value as long as the a value is negative. Right, and as long as those hold, you could plug in any a value there and those polynomial inequalities are gonna give you those solutions.